Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. I just wanted to let everyone know we're going to try something a little different tonight. Uh, we're actually going to have three shorter presentations rather than one long one. Uh, first up is Eric Tank and he's going to start and then I'll do the uh, next two presentations after he's done. Take it away. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Hello. My presentation, it's uh, There, 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 or Exec System, or Backticks, and basically the idea there being there are three commands that do pretty much the exact same thing, and I've never really knew what the difference was, so I always went back to always using the Backticks, and I always got scared because I heard that with Exec and System, you should always pass everything in a list, you know, as a list, otherwise bad things will happen, and um, so I always stay with the ticks, and I'm, you know thinking that nothing bad would ever happen. So I'm just going to go through basically each of the three uh, commands, kind of highlight their differences, and then hopefully in the end you'll uh, have a better idea of when to use which ones. Um, so basically we'll first start off with the, uh, the back ticks, or you can also use uh, the QX and then any type of symbol behind it to delimit you know, what, uh, what uh, command you actually want to execute. And uh, so the basically things to keep in mind, if you're just using the standard QX, like with parentheses, with uh, any type of slashes or pluses or anything other than the single quotes, uh, whatever's in there will be inter interpolated by Perl. And I'll, I'll show you some examples of that later. So uh, it's, uh, th this is the biggest thing to remember when using this, uh, any of the three commands is when and where something may be interpolated. So uh, as I said, with, uh, you know, with this form up here, or with just uh, simply the back ticks, uh, Perl will first interpolate what you, the string you have in there and then hand it off to the shell. Um, if you're using the single quotes, Perl doesn't interpolate it and just passes it on and the shell does what it wants with it. So uh, basically what the back ticks do is they take in that string, the command and its arguments, and it returns out what you get from the standard out. So hopefully if everything's done right, it's whatever normally you know you see when you just type in that command at the command at the prompt. And uh, if you call it in a scalar context, you basically get everything back in one scalar, uh, one string, you know, that could have multiple lines, but it'll be all in that one variable, or undef if, if it didn't work. And, oh yeah, sure. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, in array context, basically uh, every, every element in the array will be one line of the output, so then you can parse through it that way. Uh, or it'll be just an empty list if that didn't work. So fairly basic, fairly easy. You just run the command, you get it back. Um, oh, if you do need, since it only gives you standard out, if you do need standard error, you get to uh, do some of this little uh, com uh, command line uh, magic, which basically two stands for standard error, one is standard out. So basically here you're redirecting the standard out, I mean st standard error into standard out. So if you just had this portion of the command and not that portion, you would get both the standard out and the standard error. If you add the, the next part in there, the one into dev null, then again, you're just going to get standard error. So let's say if you're trying to run the command and it's just not doing what you're expecting it to do, you add this to the back of the command and then you're just getting out and any type of error it might be throwing that you're not seeing. So then uh, basically I just uh, listed a few, uh, few examples. So basically this is just the back tick. So as you can see, I'm just doing a PS. So the PS, it, it, does, um, it, it shows you what the information about the process itself. So this is helpful so you can actually see where things are being interpolated. Since we're using the back ticks here, this is being interpolated in Perl. So actually what it's handing off to the, the shell is actually PS and then the process ID number of the program that we're in. And you can see that here, there's the process ID number and there's our program. So again, this also happens when you're using uh, the, the QX, when you're quoting it. Uh, you're uh, basically, Perl interpret, uh, interprets this into, a no, uh, into the number, it's process ID number, and then there's your output of your command. However, if we use, these are the single, uh, these aren't back ticks, these are single quotes, and I didn't find a good font where it was readily very obvious. You just have to notice that a back tick is kind of slanted a little bit and a single quote's just up and down. Perl does not interpret, uh, interpolate the double a dollar sign. So what it actually does is it gives it off to the, uh, to the shell. It basically says, well, PS dollar dollar. As you can see, this is what it, command, uh, what it uh, executes. And so this is actually the process ID number of that, of, that process, of that command being executed all on its own. And again, 
if we were using, uh, if we didn't want, uh, you know, this would be interpolated, but because I'm escaping the dollar signs, again, Pearl's not inter uh, interpolating it. And this is one of the things you have to be kind of careful about when working with any of the three commands is when could something be interpolated? Because, well, if, if we were using this format and we wanted, you know, we wanted, you know, we wanted the process ID that is being used to execute that at the shell level. Well, this is kind of a stupid way of doing it because you're you're assuming that everything is going to go right. It's better just to use the the single quotes where you know, okay, Perl won't interpret this. Um, and you know, down here, I just gave a little example. If you wanted to get a dollar sign, a real dollar sign, out to the the shell, you'd have to escape it twice if you're using the 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 interpolation one because one's for the Perl, one's for the shell. Or if you were using the single, uh, the you know the the single quotes, because you're already Perl's not interpreting it to begin with, you're just telling the shell, okay, don't don't interpolate or don't don't parse the dollar signs. Of course, the PS dollar sign that just ends up blowing up and it gives you a nice big error message. So, kind of a useless command. But I'm just trying to show you that you just need to be uh, wise that you basically have two parsers looking at what you're giving it, and you want to be careful. Um, I mean. And th these are very benign examples, and they don't matter anything. The most important thing where you got to be careful is if you're taking uh, information in from the user or from a, uh, from a system, uh, information you don't have direct control over, because Perl can do something with it, and the shell can do something with it. So you want to be very careful that you're not, you know, allowing somebody to just oops, put in bad code. So the uh, next one we're going to look at is the exec. <clears throat> Basically, exec what it does is. It executes the command that you give it, and it never returns. To me, it just seems really kind of a strange command because, uh, to me, everything always should go happen in a flow. So you should, you know, be able to do something after it executes. But so basically, the, actually, it does return something if it can't find the command or if it has problems executing the command. It does throw an error. Now, Perl is, you know, fortunately smart enough for us, as long as you're running it with warnings, which I'm assuming everyone is always doing. If you run, if you run just uh, the exec command without a die, a warn, exit, or without printing something to the uh, standard error uh, on, on a fail, it will throw a warning for you. It'll say, hey, I see you're doing this, and you're not going to know if uh, something goes wrong with it. So as long as you call it in one of these two manners, it'll be, Perl won't complain or you just don't use warnings and then you know you take your life in your own hand. Of course, uh, since it hits the exec and it ends right there, it also, it never, if you're in just a regular program, it will not call your end block, or if you're an object, it does not call your destroy method. So for most, uh, for most, most purposes, exec's really not what you want to uh, go with. Uh, for that, you know, because you can have potentially code that will not get executed, and of course, any any line that comes underneath the exec uh, command will not get executed unless it fails. So, um, and this is where we get into uh, how to call it. If you call exec with one argument, so this can just be a one string or an array which only has one element, and that first element or the string has a meta character in it. What Perl will do is it will take that and give it to the shell in such a way that the shell will parse it out. And I'll have some examples of this. If you, oh, and they're right there in fact, but we'll get there in a second. So, but if you give it to it in a list, what Perl does is it does not allow the shell to parse it at all. It basically says, I'm giving you this and this is exactly what I'm giving you. It's kind of like uh, connecting to the database and using, um, yeah, placeholders instead of directly inserting your your variables into the SQL statement, you know. So Perl takes care of that. You know, if if the shell wants to use the, you know, like like here you'll see I'm using the asterisk for you know a wildcard character. In fact, I'll just go into the example. So here I'm call I'm you know I have an array, but it only has one entry. It's the first one, and the first entry does have a meta character into it, the wildcard. Asterisk. So what it does when I execute this, it does exactly that. It expands test to say anything that begins with test, and it lists everything that I have in that directory, you know, with test in it. If I execute this with, um, oh yeah, and so that's just an array. This is just if I give it a straight, uh, you know, no array, just one argument again with a special character in it, does the exact same thing. It allows the shell to expand upon it, which, and that's sometimes what you might want to happen. But um, you, 
again, you only want to do that if you know if you know the data that you have and you know exactly what it's going to do and you've you've checked for that. Uh, again, the last argument. This is how really you should call things. Is I create an um, an array where each are, you know you have the command and then the arguments to that. And what it does is it then literally says. Well, the last one, we're, what we're interested in is the asterisks. It says, okay, I don't care what the shell does. It's going to look for test asterisks. And there we can see ls can't access test actress because no such file or directory. So th that's really the, the main reason why you want to go, uh, when you're using exec or with system, as you'll see, you want to put them in a... Um, you know, in as an array, because that way you're stopping the shell from interpreting it and potentially doing something which you don't mean it to do. And again, you can ignore that if you know exactly what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, just as a safety. So, okay, system, pretty much exact same thing like the exec, except for it executes it, and when it executes it, it forks. It creates a fork. It lets that child run, and when it's done with uh, whatever that command is, it returns, and what it'll return is uh, the exit code. It also stuffs the exit code or the exit status into dollar sign question mark. And so basically, if you get back zero, everything's good with the world. A negative one basically means it either couldn't find the program or couldn't execute the program. Um, and then for whatever reason, I don't fully understand this. I couldn't find good information. The exit status is what it returns. The exit value is if you take the status and you shift it eight, character, uh, eight bits over. So that's the command there. And... As you can see, we have a few uh, few examples. Again, so I, I'm here executing foobar, which sh should do nothing. And, uh, you know, I'm just printing stuff out. So the first thing that happens is uh, the uh, system all on its own, it throws the error. It tells you, hey, I can't find foobar. And as we see, the return and the status are both negative one. And the exit code is junk because there is no exit code. It never ran to begin with. Here we have, um, now this is just an error. I'm doing a PS on a non-numeric value, which it'll throw a huge error message, and it's too big to fit here, so I just put command error message. And basically, yeah, we get a return of 256, a status of 256, and the exit code, when you shift them over, is one, basically meaning something went wrong. And it, it just, if, if you type this into the, uh, the browser, you'll get the help, you know, it'll print out the usage uh, screen, which is like a page and a half of stuff. So now th this is back to our first examples is if we're doing PS on the current on the current uh, a process number and actually since they are in single uh, single quotes again Perl will not interpret this but the shell will it'll turn this into the current process ID number and if I would and if I would turn this in if I would have passed this as an array and I should have put this up as an example so PS comma dollar sign dollar sign both in single quotes, mind you, then it, I would have had this uh, outcome because then the shell would have tried to do PS on literally dollar sign, dollar sign. Um, if I would have just done PS and then just dollar sign, dollar sign as an array, it would work great because then Perl would take the two dollar signs, give it a process ID number, and then we'd get the right command back out. And here you can see, well, everything worked great, great everything is zeros across the board. Okay, so basically, in always system is the same with the, system is the same as exact, with the exception of it forks and it comes back. So then you can do things. You know, you can go on. You can get the data back. Well, no, you don't get the data back. You don't get any standard uh, standard out. But at least whatever you've done, you know, has now successfully happened. As you know, as long as you you know check the the, the return code to make sure it's zero. And so basically these are the same three examples. I won't go through them in, in such detail again, but it shows the exact same behavior. If we're giving it to it as a single string with a meta character in it, it does exactly what would do if we typed it in on the shell. If we type it in as we should, as an, as an array, it comes back and says, no, I don't find test asterisks, which that's the safer way to do it. So uh, basically coming down to the, like, which one should you use? It's uh, pretty, actually fairly simple. If you need the output of the command, use the back ticks. If you're on a system like Windows that doesn't allow for forking or it, you can't rely on forking, you use exec. For everything else, always use system. And I, you know, preferably always pass the, um, the arguments or the command and the arguments in a list form so that you know that the command line is not doing anything on its own. So that, that you know that, okay, this is what I'm giving it, and it is using exactly those values, and it's not doing its own magic. So...
uh, just and of course as the last thing little words of ca caution is if you're doing this it's probably not going to be that portable um, y you're going to be reliant upon the fact that that command works in the next system as well which then you don't have the safeguards as let's say you know using a, a Perl function that does the same thing but usually if you're writing something like this it's a shorter script and y you know you need it for very specific things you're not going to basically do a move or a copy or a read through a directory using the system or the back ticks because Perl has you know has those things built into it um, taint mode if you are going to do this and specifically if you're going to be using outside input always turn on taint mode because that way if you forget to check for something it'll tell you because it'll scream bloody murder um, also again since you're dealing with the shell you have to be aware of the shell and the operating systems uh, restrictions Perl will put and pass anything on and it's really up you know if the the operating system or the shell can't handle it well it's you know your own fault for not checking that out first and um, uh, basically, if you're going to send things to either the backticks exec or system as or if you're using backticks or sending a single argument to exec and system, just be very aware of the shell will parse it or will attempt to parse it. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you.